Hi everyone and welcome along. So my Instagram account, my business De Winton Paper Co account, got suspended by Instagram on September the 12th, 2024. And I didn't know why at all, inexplicable. I've been trying everything to get it back. And I thought making a video about all the steps I took to try and get it back would be useful in case this happens to you. Six hours after filming that video uh, of everything you're about to watch, my phone pinged and I had an email from Instagram. Turns out they made a huge mistake and uh, they're really sorry. And these things happen. These things that I went through over the last few weeks, well, you're gonna hear all about it. I've now got my account back. I can't believe I'm saying that. Yeah, I've got my account back. I've got full control of it. De Winton Paper Co. is back, baby. So, <laughs> but you're still gonna find uh, this coming up video probably just a really handy tool just in case you ever find yourself in this situation. So watch and enjoy and know at the end that it all turned out okay. But uh, here is everything, details of everything that I tried. I'm not entirely sure which thing worked or if it was just a case of Instagram coming to their senses, but I think with that in mind, enjoy. Hi everyone and welcome along. I'm back in the studio, but today uh, we're gonna talk about something a little different because a number of you might have noticed that I've been absent from Instagram for a few weeks. De Winton Paper Co was nowhere to be found. And that was because I got suspended. The account got suspended for inexplicable reasons. It was a huge shock. Uh, it had repercussions and I thought it would be really helpful to just explain to you what happened and what it's meant for the business, uh, what it's meant for me and things I've learned that I think might be really useful if you ever find yourself in that situation or if you ever find yourself just feeling a bit strange about social media in general. So let me go back to the beginning. Um, before that suspension, I had a really unhealthily intense approach to posting content. I spent so much time creating reels in particular of every painting I did, thinking I was being clever, that I could post them to TikTok, Pinterest, Pinterest, YouTube shorts, which is all true, but at a, some kind of cost because I loved to see the numbers rise. Once I got 100,000 followers, I thought that was an amazing goal, but pretty soon I had set my sights higher uh, and higher. It certainly wasn't all consuming, but it was leading to a bit too much time and kind of importance on those numbers. Um, I was just on my phone a lot editing. Ironically, I wasn't doing doom scrolling is what most people complain about for being on your phone too long. I was just working on my phone all the time. Um, and it certainly started to feel really tiring rather than energizing. So the suspension. At 9.03 p.m. on the 12th of September, I got an email from Instagram saying that I had been suspended and the reason was given as a possible breach of community guidelines. Uh, now, you know that on here, on YouTube and on Instagram, we do watercolour painting. It's extremely tame. Um, I think the most controversial thing I've ever done is mispronounce Alizarin or Alizarin Crimson. <laughs> um, yeah, also my Instagram account is verified with a blue tick, which I pay $11.99 a month for. And I foolishly assumed that that money would go towards the prevention of this kind of thing and support if something like this did end up happening. Of course, my first reaction to being suspended was, what have I done wrong? And I hate how Often we ladies in particular are prone to think it's our fault before we even question it with reason um, and calm me down and help me think through and, and, and go through the process of the appeal, which Instagram give you right there on the spot with a link in the email. Um, so just go through some security questions. The appeal was registered and I was told it would be reviewed within the day. Great. But one day turned into two, two turned into three, turned into a week, turned into a fortnight, and that holding page didn't change. And I had to start to consider 
that I wouldn't get it back. What else could I try after that initial appeal? Well, we read that if any other Instagram account tried to come to my aid, like if Ant uh, on his account tried to come and appeal on my behalf too, that he could get whacked with a suspension as well. So we avoided that. I am one of the lucky people who, because I do this for my job, I have a literary agent who has contacts up in there in, in the sort of mysterious world of media. Um, and he tried three different routes uh, with direct contacts at Meta, nothing. I was also told that I could get somewhere by trying the business ad manager on Facebook as I have a business page there too. And I did manage to write a little note um, in the help section, but I'm still waiting on a response. The only way I managed to speak to a person, although I'm still not convinced it was a, a real person, it might have been AI, was by paying $63.99 a month to my business page um, to get it verified on Facebook. And also I had the privilege of a chat support function, $63.99. Uh, and it felt like the most amazing manner from heaven because after three weeks of nothing, just to have a glimpse of hope was amazing. So uh, a very kind Meta staff member heard my case, filed it and said they were working through, hence my three week wait because there was a massive backlog of similar cases to mine, which is quite interesting in itself. I was also given a 24 hour wait time for a response, but when it came, it was pretty pathetic. The response basically said, we've got limited support in this area. We're not going to be able to get the account manually reviewed. We do not have access to the right tools required for in investigating disabled Instagram accounts. And this was from Facebook who are owned, uh, well, Facebook and Meta and Instagram are all one thing, aren't they? So that felt great to have paid that money and got that response. It was feeling pretty pretty low at this point um, because the other thing to consider for me as a business is this is our busiest time of year and this is the time where we rely on all the channels all the platforms we have and of course after YouTube Instagram is my largest online audience so we have been thinking about uh, how on earth we could I don't know how on earth we could find people yet again so I decided that I would start a new Instagram account, which we did just the other day. And at this point, I'd love you all to just pause this video and head to Instagram to find at Harriet underscore de underscore Winton. So Harriet de Winton with the underscores in between the words and give me a follow. So this experience has been challenging to say the least. Um, not least because we've been on holiday for two weeks, trying to really, really enjoy our amazing uh, opportunity to go to Yellowstone. And trust me, there will be plenty of painting inspiration coming your way from that trip. But at the same time, it was definitely a challenge to just try not to worry about the fact that my business had a, a bit of an obstacle standing in its way. However, this video started with me saying that there were things I learnt along the way and it's not all bad. And I wanted to tell you some useful tips if this ever does happen to you. Instagram is the jewel in the social media crown for a lot of people, but it's not the only way to reach an online audience. Thankfully, I have a really engaged audience elsewhere online. Uh, nowhere more than here with you, my beloved YouTube audience. Um, you really have changed our lives in the way that you've responded to our content. Um, but big numbers are not the only way. It's all about making sure your audience are engaged with you and your content and, and by being passionate and focusing mostly on just wanting to share the thing you love rather than focusing on the numbers is the best way to start. You could have a million followers because you once did a viral video about your dog doing a dance, but 
if all those followers came for that and it doesn't have anything to do with the rest of your content the rest of the time, you're going to find a drop off or, or a remarkably unengaged response to everything else you create. I'd much rather have an email list of 500 people who are passionately uh, in love with what I do and believe in what I do because I know that will result in a truer and better response. For me, YouTube is my big family. You changed mine and Ant's life and this is where you can find me for free with the free content. And then Patreon and my email list uh, are my much smaller community of people who've taken that next step with me and in return they get even more from me. They've shown up time and again and because we've built a genuine relationship of trust and care so I really want to thank you for all that and uh, if you're curious about what Patreon is just head to the episode notes below. But the moral of this story is don't put all your eggs in one basket when it comes to online platforms. So you might see that play button on the back wall there which is something we're very very proud of uh, from YouTube, which we got when we got 100,000 subscribers. Um, over on Instagram, it's a little different, there aren't things like that, but there is the, uh, the famous blue tick, which in the old days was given to people who had a, a, a presence in the media and it was very important that they were differentiated from impersonation accounts. Um, however, more recently it's been something you can pay to get and it's marketed to you as a, a verification process, a protection from your account for that kind of thing. So very sensibly as a business, I thought, let's, let's do that. Let's pay £11.99 a month to have all the protection and verification of a blue tick. It hasn't helped at all at all in this situation. I'm still trying to work out what benefit it gave me beyond the kudos of having the blue tick and, and most people know these days that you pay for it so there isn't really much of that. Some good news, you can back up your Instagram account. I know this is news to a lot of people, we didn't know this. Um, I will post the link to the exact process of the steps, how to do it in the episode notes below, but it's a great way to protect your content even if you are unlucky enough to lose your account. So it's something that you would do in the same way that you back up your files on your computer as you go along in the hope that nothing will go wrong. But if it does, you've got that safety net. You can do the same with your Instagram content. I wish I knew that. Don't let anyone make you feel like you're being shallow or overreactive if you lose something like an Instagram account. Um, for a personal account, it goes without saying that it's heartbreaking to lose all those photos and videos. Although mine was a business account, I still had the last videos of my beloved husky, Carla, um, and you know, photos marking my aunt's wedding anniversary, all these kind of things. Don't, I will cry, not going to. Um, but even for a business, I had put 10 years of my life into that account. It spans my creative development. I used to scroll down and look back and sort of just enjoy seeing how far I'd come. Um, it's also the place where I've built a wonderful community. The community, very like this one, and I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm all the more grateful for you to be here and thank you. Um, so if anyone ever makes you feel bad for how much it hurts to lose an account like this, they don't understand what you do. Um, they clearly don't see how much it, it becomes a part of you. Um, so you are allowed to be sad, angry. I was even a little bit ashamed, a bit humiliated for a little bit. And I must say it's taken digging quite deep to sort of go back to the start and start again. So like I say, I would be so grateful to find you back on there with me following uh, so we can just get things going again. I also learned an unexpected positive. So there's some good news. Um, at the beginning of my lecture, my TED talk, <laughs> I mentioned how I was getting a bit 
Uh, but I will say burnt out with the obligation of posting and editing footage on my phone, creating reels so frequently. Once I had no access to Instagram, well, I felt the pressures of posting just fall away, even to my other accounts. Initially, I think it was mixed in with a bit of despondency, but soon I started to feel some breathing room and this was a chance to reassess my relationship with social media and recognise that for some people, spending that much time creating and posting content uh, can, really, can really affect you. Some people can do it brilliantly without any impact on mental health or energy levels. For me, let's face it, I prefer painting. I don't really want to be in front of a screen all that time. And I think uh, I'd lost sight of my true purpose as an artist by, by just making all my um, importance on, on the reels and just the, the content, content, content. Um, but what's interesting is in four years of YouTube and Patreon, I've never felt like that because I'm lucky enough that I have my wonderful aunt to edit my footage for that and I can be left to be creative and connect with my YouTube and Patreon family. Um, also, I'm a really competitive person. Anyone will tell you that, whether it's sport, board games, just, I don't know, all sorts of things. But I'm also a people pleaser. I really want to be liked. So put me in a global race to rack up followers and likes against my name. And I'm going to be susceptible to overdoing it and maybe placing too much importance on it. It's going to be difficult at times to look at my new Instagram account and see those numbers that are just a mere fraction, a mere percentage of what they were. But what I've got to remember is that I know those people who were with me the second time have chosen to come along with me. And for that, I am truly, truly grateful. So I'm calling this video part one because I don't think the story is over yet. The original Instagram account is not condemned to dust just yet. But in the meantime, I hope that by telling you what this experience taught me, uh, it will put you in a better position when you reflect on your own online presence, how much time you spend, how much importance you place on it, and what it gives you, but maybe what it takes away from your life. So by all means, Protect your accounts the best you can with two-factor authentication, changing your passwords. Don't click links on suspicious emails and try to enlist the help of a tech-savvy friend or relative if you ever feel unsafe. But what I can guarantee you is that this whole experience will not stop me enjoying painting and communicating with you on here because that's how it all began, and that's the most important thing. So for now, I'm gonna get back here, and we're gonna do some painting, and it just so happens that my new book is gonna be out in a matter of days. Here it is, the reverse coloring book that, I tell you what, has calmed me down uh, in quite a few moments of, um, of trial in these last few weeks. It's just been a really nice meditative, relaxing thing to do. So if you want to show your support for um, a channel that has, has been through a bit over the last fortnight, then follow me on Instagram. Have a look down below in the episode notes to see if you want to join my Patreon. Maybe buy a copy of my brand new book or any of the products that you see me using in these videos. They're all in my Etsy shop, on my web store. All of these things are the lifeblood of our business and keep us able to, to entertaining you, essentially. Um, so I will say thank you once more. You mean absolutely everything to me because this is our life and our business. And this very office was built off the back of the success of the YouTube channel. So for now, De Winton Paper Co. on Instagram remains floating in the ether. De, uh, De Winton Paper Co. everywhere else is just fine. And for now, you can find me on Instagram at Harriet underscore De underscore Winton. That makes Harriet De Winton. And I will see you again 
for the next video where we're going to grab our paints and get started. Well, YouTube I like because they haven't screwed me over, but it's always in the back of the darkest corner of my mind that it might all go.